Hey, what's up everybody? So Android is full of awesome features that you can do, but unless you're a hardcore power user, there are probably some things you don't know about. In this video, we're gonna go over seven cool tricks that you really should know if you don't already. Let's get started. If you go into the Play Store a lot to check on the My App section, there's a shortcut that will take you right there from your home screen. Long press on the Play Store, long press on the my app shortcut and then you can drag that anywhere you want and now when you tap on that it'll go directly to the my app section and then you can update your apps every app in android has an app info page in the settings if you want to jump straight there you can go to the recent apps long press on the app icon and then tap the little eye icon and now you're in the app info page Screen pinning is a feature that allows you to pin an app so that when someone else is using your phone, they can only use that app and do nothing else. We're gonna go into the settings, security, scroll down to screen pinning, turn that on, and make sure you have ask for unlock pattern before unpinning. And now to pin an app, simply open that app, tap the recent button, pull up, and now we're gonna tap the pin. And now we are pinned. I can't go to the home screen or leave this app, I'm stuck in the settings app. But I know how to get out, which is to hold the back button. And now just enter my screen lock and I can use the phone normally. This is the quick settings area and it's full of these tiles that allow you to do things like toggle on Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. You can actually add your own custom tiles to this area as well. In the Play Store, search for quick settings tile and you'll see a bunch of results of different tiles that you can install. Once you do install them, they'll be available in here by going to the edit button and you should see it down here and then you can drag it wherever you want in the quick settings area. And now I have the weather conditions and current temperature right in my quick settings. If you're not on an unlimited data plan, which most of us aren't, you might wanna restrict certain apps from using data in the background. If you go into the data usage settings, there's something called data saver. We can turn this on and now from this list of apps, you can choose which apps you want to be able to use data in the background when you're off Wi-Fi. So for example, maybe I want Gmail to be able to give me emails still, but I wouldn't want something like Feedly sucking on data in the background. So simply enable all the apps that you wanna be able to use data, and then you're good to go. And when you're done, turn Data Saver off. Using a screen lock is a great way to keep people from getting into your phone, but it doesn't prevent them from seeing the notifications on your lock screen. If you have a very sensitive notification, someone could read that even if they can't get into your phone. If you go into the notification settings, tap the gear icon and tap on the lock screen, we get three options for don't show notifications at all, show all notification content, and hide sensitive notification content. If you choose this one, and we go back to the lock screen, you'll see that I can see I have a push bullet notification, but now the contents are hidden. So anyone that looks at my phone won't be able to read it. Most phones these days have fingerprint scanners, but they don't do a whole lot other than scan your fingerprint. An app called Fingerprint Quick Action can make the fingerprint scanner do more. We're gonna install the app and open it and enable it. Then we're gonna be asked to enable accessibility. So we do that. Now back in the app, you can choose actions for a single tap, a fast swipe, and a double tap. So for example, maybe we want a single tap to go home. And now when I tap the fingerprint scanner, it takes me home. For a fast swipe, we could do toggle the notification panel. And now when you swipe down across the fingerprint scanner, it pulls down the notifications. And again, we'll hide them. Using GIFs is a great way to communicate. And sometimes the right GIF can even say more than a finely crafted text. The Gboard keyboard has GIFs built right in. So if you tap the emoji button, there's also a GIF button right here. And now you can search through the categories and find one, tap it, and send the message on your way. Not all apps support this, but more and more are supporting it. So that's our list. Some of those you may have known, but hopefully some of them you didn't know. And if you want more of these, we did a video a couple of years ago with seven more tips and tricks, so check that out. And if you want some more written step-by-step -step instructions, check the link down in the description to the article on Fandroid. But until next time, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to the Fandroid channel for more. We'll see you next time.